So what is a natural hamster enclosure? Well, you could say if you put a bunch of wooden toys in a hamster cage and then call that a natural cage theme. While that is a natural hamster cage theme, it's not exactly the most natural. So why would you want to give your hamster a natural enclosure? Well, for one, it would allow them the ability to do their natural instincts. A lot of the times when people get a hamster, they often go for the plastic toys and things like that, and they just put in a bunch of toys like that. They don't provide other things for your hamster to actually show their natural instincts. A hamster doesn't play with toys like a cat or dog would. They need to have different types of enrichment to make them happy. So when you're providing them with that natural enclosure, you are giving your hamster more enrichment rather than just putting a bunch of plastic toys in a hamster cage. So how do you create a natural enclosure? To start with, the most important thing would have to be bedding depth. A lot of people will put in just five inches of bedding and that really isn't enough. Hamsters are ground dwellers, so they do most of their stuff underground until nighttime and then they come up, of course. But a lot of their time is spent underground. Therefore, it's really important you provide a lot of substrate for your hamster. I know a lot of people will say, well, my hamster doesn't like burrowing, but that might be because you're not providing enough bedding. If you only provide five inches and your hamster's just not burrowing, it might be because, well, it's kind of hard to burrow in just five inches, especially if you have a Syrian hamster who is larger. When they're burrowing in five inches, they can't go down and create different tunnels and things. It's, it's one way because it's not enough bedding. I highly would recommend having at least 10 inches so that it gives your hamster the ability to actually create good, stable burrows. Another important part of having a natural enclosure is foraging. A lot of people will just give their hamster food in a dish, and so the hamster will go to the dish and they'll eat from there. And it doesn't provide any brain stimulant, it doesn't make them work for us. Foraging actually makes them have to do their natural instincts where they have to find food, bring it back to their nest, or put it into a boredom breaker where they actually have to work for the food. This can be really simply done by just taking your hamster's regular seed mix, sprinkling it all over the cage, putting it in different like hiding spots or boredom breakers so that they actually have to work for it. Um, you can also provide sprays. These are super great because it makes your hamster have to actually pick seeds off of like the branch like a hamster would in the wild. Um, there are a lot of different sprays like oat sprays, wheat sprays, flax sprays, and millet sprays. These also do make the cage look a lot more natural and your hamsters will really like them. Another important thing for foraging is herbs. Now if you haven't heard me talk about herbs before then you probably haven't seen a lot of my videos because I have mentioned herbs a ton of times and I get a lot of questions about it. So herbs are really good to sprinkle around the cage. They're healthy for your hamster to eat and they're good for your hamster to eat as well. There's a variety that is safe. I don't know them off the top of my head so I'll leave a list on screen, but there is a ton that you can choose from. Um, they are harder to get in the US and Canada. There are places like ViOVet that you can order online. They do ship internationally or you can look in health food websites. I find that they sell herbs as well. If you live in Europe, then it is a lot easier to get herbs because you can literally just walk into pets at home and they sell bags of herbs. <laughs> the next thing is sand. I highly would recommend every single hamster have a sand bath. There are some hamsters who need more sand than others, such as Roboroskis. They actually should have one third of their cage be sand just because of where they naturally would come from. Now other species like Syrians and other dwarfs, they don't need as much sand, but I highly would recommend you provide it. It gives them an opportunity to clean their coat if they ever want to. It also gives them a different texture to dig in. And a lot of hamsters use it as a litter box. So that just makes cleaning the cage a little bit easier for you. Now when it comes to cage accessories, there are a lot of things that you actually can put into your enclosure. For a hamster, I actually would recommend making it a little bit more crowded. Of course, not too crowded that they can't walk, but hamsters are prey animals. So when they're out in an open space, 
they don't feel very comfortable in it. So when you're providing more hideouts and tunnels, it's a lot better for them. They're going to feel a lot safer. So some good things to include would be cork logs. These are awesome for hamster cages. They come in a ton of different shapes and sizes, as well as it's basically a natural tunnel for your hamster and it gives them a different texture to walk on. Another thing that's great is grapevine wood. This once again comes in different shapes and sizes, so you can put as much as you want in there and it gives your hamster a different thing to explore and hide under as well as rocks and different branches are good to include you can get these from outside but you do need to be careful and you need to sanitize them correctly so with rocks you are going to want to scrub with soap and water before using and with branches from outside you are going to want to make sure the tree that you're getting the branch from has not been treated with pesticides you also want to make sure it is a safe type of wood that your hamster can chew and you are going to want to bake it in the oven or boil it. You can actually find a lot of good accessories for hamsters in the reptile section. There's tons of different types of woods and hides and things that will re look really, really great in a natural enclosure that are also safe for hamsters. It also really doesn't have to be expensive to make your hamster a natural enclosure. You can, of course, get things from outside if you properly sanitize it. Look for things on sale, look online and just save the items up slowly until you have enough to make a whole natural enclosure. Another thing when it comes to natural enclosures, doing a full clean out is a big no-no. You never really have to actually clean your natural enclosure out that often, especially if your cage exceeds the bare minimum. You should also know your hamster best. If they only pee in certain sections, you really only have to clean those sections. If your hamster doesn't pee in the middle of the cage, then it's not really necessary to be removing that bedding. It's very, very stressful to take out all of your hamster's bedding. If you absolutely need to do more of a full clean on your hamster's cage, try to just remove half of the dirty bedding and add in new. Never remove all of the bedding. So I really hope this video could help anyone who is interested in creating a natural enclosure. Of course, if you don't wanna go with a natural enclosure, that's fine. I just really think natural enclosures are great because once again, it provides your hamster with that natural instinct that's really good for them and it helps them from becoming bored. A lot of the times when hamsters aren't given those opportunities to show those natural instincts, they're gonna show boredom, like chewing on the cage of bars and monkey barring. So now I'm going to end this video off with some of my Instagram followers natural cage setups to give you guys some more inspiration for your guys' cages.